Hagar and Ishmael. Before this story, we learned about the covenant God made to Abram, and a promise that his descendants would be as many as the stars in the sky. Abram showed faith, and God accounted it to him as righteousness. Now we will learn about the lack of faith Abram shows, and the birth of Ishmael inspired by the book of Genesis. Years had passed since God's promise to give Abram and Sarai descendants. So many years, in fact, that the possibility of child-rearing seemed far out of reach. After all God had promised, Abram and Sarai's hearts became discouraged. Out of discouragement, impatience, and uncertainty, the two decided to repeat the sins of their forefathers. They wanted to become like God. Sarai's impatience reeled within her. As Eve took the forbidden fruit so she would become like God, so Sarai devised her own plan to replace God's plan. Go in to my servant, Hagar, and have a child with her. I will claim the child as my own, she said. Abram, just as his ancestor Adam did nothing to defend his wife's honor and integrity, instead he took the Egyptian maid servant to his bed, and the two embraced often and had sex until a child was conceived. Given full permission by his wife, yet ignoring the call to be a better man, Abram went into her again and again, falling further from God's plan for him. When Hagar discovered she had conceived, she looked at Sarai with contempt. Her body had been used for the twisted desires of her insecure mistress, and there was anger and hurt because of it. Sarai, already feeling the shame welling up within her, lashed out at Abram. This wrong done to me is on your hands. I gave my servant for you to embrace. The second she conceived, she looked on me with contempt. God will judge you for this. The once noble and heroic Abram, now crestfallen and pitiful, pressed into his sin even more. She's your servant. Do to her as you please. As Adam once did in the garden, Abram refused any responsibility over his companion and allowed her heart to stray even further. Sarai abused her servant, Hagar. Her words and her fists oppressed her into a panic. Feeling like she had no other options, Hagar fled to the wilderness. Hagar ran until she found refuge by a spring. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to her, saying, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where did you come from, and where are you planning on going? Frantic, pregnant, and alone, she replied, I am fleeing from the oppression of my mistress Sarai, for she has become cruel. The Lord, with compassion and understanding in his voice, spoke clearly to her. Go back to your mistress, Sarai. Submit to her. I, the creator of life itself, will multiply your descendants as well. He continued, You shall bear a son and call his name Ishmael, because I have seen your affliction and heard your cries. Your son will grow to be a wild and strong warrior. He will struggle, fight, and be beaten by many. The world will be against him, but I will bless him, and he will gain the respect of his people and rule over them. Hagar, having just been used by her master and mistress, finally felt some semblance of worth. She felt that God had truly seen her. So there at the spring, she gave a personal name for God, the God of seeing. She said, I have seen the God who looks after me. Hagar returned to Sarai and Abram and bore a son just as God had said. She named him Ishmael 
which means God hears. Abram was now 86 years old, and his unfaithfulness to God would not go without its consequences. Yet God's promise to bless Abram was not void, for he made a covenant to Abram and would not leave him or forsake him.